Oh, sugar. Hello. Hi there, SG. And those on Twitter, hello. Thank you for being here tonight with me. The No Drama channel. We've left the drama at the door. We got off that crazy train. We're not having it no more. How's your day being, everyone? I swear to God, these tracks. Right, my day's been a, well, was a bit crappy this morning because I wasn't feeling too good. But after having a, a couple of little sleeps, like half hour sleep here or an hour sleep there, and having something to eat, I sort of come alive about 3 pm this afternoon. I came to the land of the living. So, since 3 p.m., and that's when I was I logged on about 4 p.m. And I saw, hold on. Oh, shut on my phone, get back up there. Mimi, hello. Heat advisory here in Miami. Well, I was talking to my daughter today, phoned up just to see how I was. Uh, that's my kids, they're checking on me. Even though I could tell them a bunch of lies, they wouldn't know how I was really. 
<laughs> I could be dying on my bed and I said, oh, I'm fine. But no, she phoned me up and she said, oh my God, you can't hear mum. She's only an hour and a half away from me, where she lives. An hour and a half, I car. Right? And I went, yesterday was warm, but today it's very... You could, I could actually see the cloud going, drifting past my window. Right? I said, but if you look below, below the cloud, I said, it looks quite warm. <laughs> so, we're having a bit warm weather at the moment. One side's a heat wave, though. Scotland don't get heat waves. I swear if you blink, you'll miss the heat, the sun. In England, if you blink, you'll miss your summer. You won't get no sun. You blinked, you missed it. Anyway, so I went online about, so I'm just getting comfy, about 4pm this afternoon. And I was checking the messages on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And I, I went on Nick Berry's Facebook page. I thought, thank God, he's put a stop to all that flipping nonsense. I said last night, I wanted to check all that out first before I did, said anything. You know what I mean? I wasn't going to act on it. I wasn't going to go and go put a post out saying, oh my God, the found new video of Sebastian on the 26th. You know what I mean? Even if they have got a video of him on the 26th, it's, it's got to be before 6am. It's got to be between 12am and 6am. Because his mum got up, was up at 6am. You know what I mean? So, but I'm going to read it. I'll show it up here in a minute. But it didn't dispel the fact about um, how after 72 days, the police did a literally full, a full 180 on the case. On Monday when he went missing, he was classed as a, a runaway. On the Tuesday, he was classed as a missing child. And by the end of the Wednesday, they'd literally done a one whole 80 on the case. So what happened... Between that Tuesday and the Wednesday for them to, whew, to literally do a one whole 80 on that case. And as I keep saying, the law enforcement don't have to tell us anything. They don't. And I just don't like the fact that they're using um, Nick Berries to put out their their statements, when really, what would it hurt for them to stand up in front of a camera once a week, once a fortnight? Or like when we get anything like all these stupid group, oh, go away. Sorry, that's my phone pinging. I like to take the, um, watching names off. But why couldn't they come up and do a quick recap last night? All this morning say, this is not true. What was said on this TikTok is not true. Why could they not say that? Why do they have to go through Nick Berry's? You know what I mean? Or was it Nick Berry's got in touch with them? Because apparently a lot of people was getting in touch with him last night about this. Yes. Yes, SJ. Everything Tony said was a lie. I said it, didn't I? I said it. I said, no way is some guy off the street going to be able to hire at LE. No way is some guy, random guy, going to walk off the street into the police station and the law enforcement going to say, yes, we've got video of him on the 26th. And yes, um, we've got uh, information that Sebastian was talking to his grand, Katie's mother, on the train, on the uh, night before he went missing. Go away. Oh, God, it's my daughter. What does my daughter want? 
She, she, you know what she does? She sends me pictures and goes, will you buy me this? Let's see. It. I can't. Won't open for me. Close that up. Feck off. Right. And I just don't like the fact that it's going live on TikTok because unless you see that live there and then, you can't see it once it's finished. You can't see it. I tried to see it yesterday before I went live and I was only able to... See. The only things I saw was clips on... God, this fucking, fucking phone just my head in. was clips on... Facebook, that's people it took from the live, from the live TikTok. Right, what's my daughter saying? Now it's going to open. Oh, <laughs> oh, see, they've been putting up a, like a three to four foot fence along their garden. Right, because they, they live next to, my daughter lives next to her partner's mother and father. So, they just shared the whole garden because it was massive garden. But um, they couldn't let their dog out when when her mother-in-law, so whatever, mother-in-law, father-in-law, let their dog out. She couldn't let her dog out. And it wasn't fair, so they put up a little fence and she just sent me the photo. <laughs> Yeah, she sends me photos. She sent me one the other week. And it's a pair of sandals. A pair of sandals. A hundred and something odd pound. I looked at her and I didn't even reply to it. I didn't even reply to that one. If it had been her birthday, well, it was her birthday last month. Right? But I did get her something for her birthday, so she's not getting a hundred and something odd pound pair of shoes off me. <laughs> if it say she said to me before her birthday, like in March, Mum, would you buy me these? I'll go, okay, I'll go for your birthday. High certified alien, alienist, Ellie Andrews, hello, Mimi, SG. I asked Nick in private message if you please ask law enforcement if it was true. So Tony is now trying to fix issue on group f Facebook page. Tony is, well, apparently, I'm giving up on those two. That one with, um, that one of uh, Mysterious Disappearance of Sebastian Rogers and that other Facebook page that Tony opened up, I'm giving up on. Because the one is just full of BS. Right, and if you if you disagree with something in this one fake, not that Sebastian one, the mysterious one, right? If you disagree with someone in there, admin will either take your badge off you, and if you disagree with that, if you put a post up, like, why you took my badge off me for putting a comment up, they literally block you. And um, I've just heard today that. People are going on that Sebastian one, and they're putting comments up about what was said and whatever, and they're, they're blocking them. I thought, you know what? You can't talk nowadays. You can't make a decent comment. We're trying to get to the bottom of this. And they're just blocking you every, every time you ask something. Because the one page is just full of BS. So if you want drama, go to that mysterious... Disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. It's full of drama. And if you just want to get blocked from a Facebook page, go to that Sebastian Rogers page. <laughs> because you ask a question on there, and they're going to block you. So try, I send Pictura pictures of things I don't want to forget. <laughs> oh, don't forget to hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Um, yeah, Tony, they're both, well, that one night, he come up and he did his own post on TikTok, I think it was. I'm not sure. But he did apologise. He did apologise. So fair dues. 
Tony is doing backtracking out. He should have checked all that information he was given. You know what I mean, what would a phone call have cost him to have phoned your SESO and said, is this true? You know what I mean? I've just heard this. Thank you, Ellie. What was that at SG today? I looked many of the negative times about Tony are still going on group page. But if you go on his group on that group page he and he put he started and you put anything negative up there about Tony, they're literally blocking you. I'm thinking I don't, I don't know what to do here because I've got questions and I know if I ask these questions, they're gonna block me. But I might just do that tonight. I might throw some questions on both those sides and see what happens. Because that's freedom of speech. Freedom of speech applies across the whole world. Everyone's got freedom of speech. So, so yes, Nick Barris has come up and I will show you it all because I always, if I'm going to put anything on my YouTube channel I like to share it if I can or save it somewhere did I share it? sure did yes I did share it because I was going to email him myself Last night, but I was so tired after I finished that I just uploaded my video onto my laptop. And then I thought, I'll, I downloaded my vi the video onto my laptop. Then I thought, I'll upload it onto YouTube in the morning. But because I wasn't feeling too good this morning, I didn't bother. And I've only just done it, just done it before coming on here. Right. So, I put a comment when I posted it, I said, finally, let's just go, please stick to the facts, and let's, let's trust the SESO and TBI are doing their jobs. We've got to trust that they're doing their jobs. We've got to. We can still put our theories out there. You know what I mean? So, no, no one can stop us from having our opinions and our own theories and whatever. So we can still put them out there. Yeah, it was all lies. Apart from the 72 hour thing where they, he didn't dispute that and I'll, you're seeing him in it. Exactly, we go by the facts. And we haven't got many facts. We really haven't. Katie, where's your song? Where's that baby? Here's your baby. So, um, it is, it's heartbreaking and it's turning into a right fiasco and I think the police need to step in now and start saying things. But we have no facts. The only facts we know is that on the Sunday, on the Sunday he went out with his mum, met his niece and his two aunts. They went to BJ's, they went bowling, they went to the steakhouse, Texas Roadhouse. Came home, he put the trash out. He went and played in the room for a bit, went to bed at nine o'clock. His mum went to bed. His mum was on the phone then to CP from 9, 9, I said, I heard it was 9.30, but people are saying it was 9pm. I think it's more like 9.30, she was on the phone, 9.30 till 12, with CP. She goes to bed, puts the dogs in the crate, she goes to bed, she gets up in the morning, he's not there. She frantically runs around the house looking for him, can't find him, so what does she do? Oh, I'll phone the police. No, she phones Chris, who's three and a half hours away. Right? And then she jumps in the car, 
goes off driving around for 10 minutes before she's back again. Right? No, and the Nick, well, they're putting it through uh, Nick Berry's. Why, why should they talk to us? They've got their puppet, Nick Berry's. He's putting all the information out there. All the people that say, well, law enforcement. No, they didn't. They did. Exactly. Exactly. So unless you, I hear it off Nick Berry's, I'd rather hear it off the law enforcement myself. You know what I mean? Oh, oh yes. Hi, Tracy. <laughs> Sorry. I'm robbing. I'm forgetting to say hello to you all. Sorry. Right? So unless you hear it off law enforcement or even Nick Berry's, if we have to. Right? It's not true. So, but it, as I said, it doesn't dispute the fact that on the Monday he was classed as a runaway. On the Tuesday he was classed as a missing person. And by Wednesday they'd done a whole 180 on the case. It doesn't dispute that in here. Not that like I read, anyway. So, for those who haven't seen it, and for those who are watching it um, later, here it is. Uh, I can't get any closer. Sorry about that, everyone. Nikki says, spokesman. No, yeah. They're puppy, as I call him. <laughs> yeah. They can't, with Nick putting out these posts that he's getting off the information off law enforcement, they're not having to answer any questions off the press. Sneaky, aren't they? So, because we're catching the, the law enforcement out in their lies as well. Don't forget, we're catching them out in their lies. Because they said in that one press release, that no complaint had been given into the police, to law enforcement, about being followed and um, about the threats, intimidation and all that lot. Yet we know there had been. Because we know Seth had and his searchers had put complaints in. We know other people had put complaints in. So they lied there. No, they don't need to talk to anyone. They don't need to tell a sod dog, to be honest with you. Yeah, that is true. That is totally true. So really, on the Wednesday, they decided it was going. In, it was more of an investigation. So, but something happened between the Tuesday and the Wednesday for them to decide to make that decision. What was it that happened? Right, hold on, I'm just getting rid of this off my phone. I love your fence dingies, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I dread opening up uh, messages off my daughter. I do. But I love her. Seth needs to uh, lead, what was that? Seth needs to lead, to have the lead detective look into um are they doing their job i have to believe they are have they got their hand in their pocket somewhere possibly i don't know but it just seems yep this is what i'm saying Perhaps Sebastian did fall out the bed. Or, you know, what I was saying is, perhaps he, wouldn't go to, he couldn't go to sleep. He wasn't tired. He had a very active day, right? And he was over-tired sort of thing. He just didn't want to sleep. His mum had gone in there and was telling him, look, you've got to get to sleep, right? A little 
tug of war between them started. Yeah. Oh, you will get into your bed and he's getting up. No, you're getting sort of thing. And I think perhaps he's found and bumped his head. And that was the thud. And without realising it, he's got up, he's got into his bed and finally fell asleep. And then in the morning, you heard her say herself in that interview, I went in and woke him up. He was gone. How can you wake someone up if he's not there? So I think he passed during the night. I really do. And that interview she did on the TV with WSMV4, it's like she's sitting there rocking. And she, you could see she was upset. She was upset. I'll give her that. Gone as in dead, yes. Yes, Robin. How? What do you mean, Ellie? How? You know what I mean? You don't know if... Like, look at that time when Seth said about how he went for him, went storming at him, and he tripped over some toys, yeah? And his head was going towards the door, so he put his hand in the way to stop his head hitting the door. Perhaps something like that happened, but she didn't put her hand in the way, and he's hit the wall or something. We don't know how... Ask Katie, where was your son, Katie? Hmm... We need, she needs to talk out. What you said, he went to, to wake him up. Yeah, in that interview, when they talk about what happened on the Sunday and I went to bed, she said, he went to bed at 9 o'clock and all the, I love you, mum, and all that lot. She went to bed at 12. She got up at 6 and she went and woke him up. And he was gone. Or something like that. It was... He wo she went in and woke, I went in and woke him up for school or something like that. And he was gone. How can you wake someone up if they're not there? I went in and woke him up or something like that. And it, I thought that was just a bit strange. How can you wake someone up if they're gone? If they're not there. Katie said, I went to wake him up and he was gone. No, she said, I went in, oh, I'll, I'll pull that video back up if I have to. <laughs> no, I won't. We're not going to have a discussion on that, but I just think something happened on the night, and he passed during the night. Why? I don't think there's no hangover between this steakhouse. I don't think there's any hangover. I believe he did go home that night. And as I keep saying, something happened in that house. Why do you think she won't stay in that house no more? There's two reasons why she won't stay in that house no more. One could be Chris don't trust her no more because of the rumours that was going around with her and her neighbour. Or two, so whatever happened in that house, she don't want to be there no more. Yeah, she altered it slightly the next time she spoke about. It. It's haunting her, yeah. Get her off her medication. Doctors, if you're out there and you've got medica her on medication, get her off that medication. She will talk. She will talk like a bleeding parrot then. Because without that medication, keeping her on her, a level of level, uh, balance, She will talk. She wanted help that day in that interview. Chris McDonough or something said that. It's like, you know, when she does that mirroring, when he does an action, she does the same. 
It's her way of saying, I want help. She's mirroring what he does. I want help. And she's sitting there rocking back and forth. She wanted to tell, say something else, but she couldn't. But apparently, Robin, they've been in there 10 times. So what they've done 10 times in that house? Don't make sense. While they're going out, they must have a looming old thing or something. Ten times in a house and not and then still not got any evidence. They must have done. Anyway, this is what it says. More rumours, more run rampant. Oh yeah, they did. I appreciate the fact that so many of you continue to show interest in the Sebastian Rogers case. And you message me with questions. Mm -hmm. The 15-year-old autistic boy has been missing for more than two months from his Hendersonville, Tennessee home. Vanished and not a trace found despite, despite massive search efforts. Authorities say there is no evidence of foul play, though they have not ruled it out. No evidence of foul play. Hmm, okay. Okay. In the absence of any new development, armchair detectors on social media and podcasts create their own fiction. I said that at the beginning. I said once the law enforcement stop talking, you'll have all these people coming out saying, well, I... coming up with their own theories and, and then making it out it's real. Making it out, putting it out there and people think, oh, that could... Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they're talking about it and that becomes a rumour. Yeah, and gets passed on to someone else. And then it's like Chinese whispers. And what you actually started off with, that person who ends up with that information isn't getting the same information. And so I also appreciate so many of you contact me to ask if any of it's true. You can trust I'll give it to you straight. Well, you better because I'll give you some straight. So what are a couple of the latest doozies? <laughs> I love that one, doozies. Investigators have obtained new videos showing Sebastian alive on February 26th when he disappeared. Nope. Nana, nothing, no. There's evidence showing Sebastian was in contact with his grandmother on his mother's side before he disappeared. Nope. Nana, nothing. No, it's not true. How do I know? I've been in direct contact with the lead investigator with the Summer County Sheriff's Office who says the latest stuff is all garbage. Would they like to have new leads? You bet. And they respond to all tips. But they deal with facts, as do I. Do authorities tell us everything they have in the case file? No, and they don't have to. But they won't lie and say something is false if it isn't. They will simply say no comment. So when so a law enforcement say you ask them a question, they say no comment. You know you're hitting it. You you know you're hitting it on the bone. You know what I mean. You know you got some there. Hopefully there will be credible break in the case soon. Until then, please be very sceptical of stunning new developments unless they come from a credible official source. Wow! 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 Right. I just don't know what kind of hit will put an end to a life like that. I've raised three hardcore sons who played football. But he had some sort of war fluid on his brain. And even his father said, if he hit that part of that brain, if he bumped it or knocked it, it could kill him. That's why he wasn't allowed to play football or any really sort of hard contact sport. Maybe if they sell the house, sending everybody for full forensics. <laughs> I said that they saw, if, say, I lived in the US and I had the money and they put that house for, up for sale, I'd buy it. I'd go in and buy it, right? But before I actually moved anything in, I'd have full forensics in there, sniffer dogs, cane on dogs, you name it, everything in that house. I'd have the walls ripped down, everything. Any wall that could be ripped down, I'd have it ripped down. Because I'd want to know 
if anything had happened. Well, certified alienist, um, they have been there 10 times, apparently. 10 times. So, why would they go there 10 times? Oh, go away, messages. Right. Why would they go to her home 10 times? Katie knows what happened to her son, yeah. She was the last one there. What's lies, Robin? What is lies? I believe, I believe since AD has been involved, I believe it's criminal. I believe since... Yeah, and what made them... You know what I mean? What made them... People are questioning that search at the landfill. So let's all call the police department and talk to the lead detective. <laughs> oh... No, Tony's not a private investigator. He's a p he makes himself out to be a PR. But a good PR will get check will check any information coming in. Right? Now that guy who gave him the information, he's apologized and he's apologized publicly. I I don't know if they have done forensics trace it, I really don't. After 10 visits, you'd think they would have. So, At the moment, all they've got is, what is it, um, sort of evidence, um, they've got no DNA, they've got no forensics, that's what Seth said, the reason they've got no evidence is because they didn't do the forensic search, right, but we don't know if they have been in and doing it. Steve is a lawyer. He never spoke to any law enforcement. Law enforcement is not going to talk to anyone about an open investigation of a missing disabled child, let alone let's all call law let's all call law enforcement. <laughs> I feel both bad for that kid crabtree. It's like he came in completely unaware and wasn't prepared for the backlash. Yes, but it should Well, in a way, he came in with some information which he he just misread, right? He misread the information that was given to him, right? I'm not saying he didn't have a conversation with that police officer. He probably did, right? Uh, he misread the information given to him. Now, when he gave that information to Tony, who is acting as Seth's PR, he should have got that confirmed by law enforcement, by making one simple phone call to Bobby, right? Or even one simple phone call to Eric Craddock, or whatever his name is, right? It would have took a few minutes to make that phone call just to get confirmed before going on a TikTok and blasting out everywhere. I don't know if I heard it off, I don't believe CP said that, I don't know who said they've been in 10 times, but, you know what I mean, that's probably in there every day the first week, and that wouldn't be 10 times, that's only what, they was only searching for 8 days, because by not, by the 8th day, they did that interview, and did, um, scale back the search on the 9th day. So, if they're ringing every day, that's only eight searches. But I'd be saying, yeah, you can stay here if you want, I'll cook you dinner if you want, just do what you got to do in my home. But, as I said last night, I, I didn't want to do anything until I found out for sure 
about that. But something, they must have got some information on the Tuesday to make it do a 180 of the case. He said he misread, but he lied. Mm. But I'm not blaming that lad. I'm not. Right? I'm blaming Tony. Tony should have checked all this out. Because that lad, by saying what he said, is giving Seth some hope. Just to have it gas from under his feet again. You know what I mean? And he did apologise. He has publicly apologised. But, um, so I'm not blaming that lad. I'm blaming Tony because he should have done, been, done his job and done a bit of due diligence on it and got it all checked out. I don't know if I could let law enforcement leave. Yeah. I be call the sheriff's office and try to get some information on. You know what they say to me? Do you know what they say to me, Robin, if I was to phone the sheriff's office? Because as soon as I phone them, it will come up with my area code. And it will come up as a UK area code. And they go, you're from the UK? Yeah. Yeah. That little oil, that little island, UK, England. Got nothing to do with you, so, you know. They wouldn't tell me nothing. I'm from the UK. It doesn't involve me, so why would they tell me anything? So I, I have to go on what Nick Berry says, or if they ever do do a press release, in front of the cameras, then go by what they say. But I can call them out on the lies because I know they lied about that not getting any complaints about uh, being threatened and being followed. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like telling you the other night on, what did you do about the Pascal show? Oh, uh, he did a, a TikTok thing, didn't he? And he said, yeah, um, Chris, uh, Seth has got the uh, reports from the GCS and he'll be talking about it tonight on the show. I think the Pascal show broke the fucking internet that night because everyone was out to watch it. You know what I mean? And I knew, I thought, he can't tell anyone what's in them records. You know what I mean? It's it's a 15-year-old child. It's You can't talk about cases like that. Plus, it's evidence as well, because that's something law enforcement can be using. So we can't talk about nothing like that. So Tony was wrong to do that as well. No, I I was giving Tony the benefit of the guy working for Seth. But the past week or so, he's just come out with a BS and BS and BS. And he's starting to BS my heading. Right? Because I don't I don't believe him no more. Block my number. <laughs> oh yeah. They really wouldn't give me no answers. They would tell by my accent as well. I can't. I can't do a fake accent. I can't even talk like a the proper English. I can't. I just can't do it. I totally missed all that mess. All I did care about is the root element of the case and the safety term. Thank you, sir, for dialing us. Yep, that's what we all care about. That's what we want. I know Kate and CP aren't being threatened or followed, but we ha we do know um, some searchers have been followed and they have had threats given them. 
knocked one for for instance, knock divers. Right? He'd been out there two weekends with his boats. Right? The first weekend he was walking. He was in there actually in this muggy water. Right? And then the second weekend he was out there with CJ someone and he was on his boat. And that's when I was told they had the threats given to him. <laughs> uh, no, I've been honest. It, they can't say anything about a child. You've got a child record on a child, right? Until it's well, put it this way: Would you like if it was your child? Would you like it all over the internet? I know I wouldn't if it was my child. And so he's, he's also thinking as a father, you don't want that all over the internet. And I really believe someone was right. They said when CP threatened him because he found out that Bobby was now talking to him, talking to Seth, CP said, well, whatever he learned, whatever Bobby tells Seth, if Seth repeats anything, opens his mouth, I'll make sure he... I'll shut his mouth and make sure it never opens again. Because he knows. And I'll tell you now, he won't be happy that Seth has got that report either. He won't be happy. But why is he going so quiet? Christopher, where are you? Where's Katie? Put Katie on a, a live. We want to check she's okay. Not that we believe her, we just want to make sure she's okay. We want to make sure she's got no black eyes and cuts to her face or, or anywhere else. Produce Katie, CP. Produce her. Yeah, I'm not saying he threatened searchers. I'm saying searchers have been threatened, Robin. Searchers have been threatened. You know what I mean? I don't know who by, don't know if it's people who know CP, I don't know. It might just be a group of people who don't want all this going on in their area and want them to leave. So they think, we'll give them a, uh, a couple of threats, they'll move out then. For God's sake, you're the only one who has said this. Yes, we need to know where Katie is safe. I've been saying it for a couple of weeks now, I really have. Because the last time we seen Katie was when she did that interview with that uh, guy on the, who got the TV channel as well. And we haven't seen or heard of her since. Oh, yes, Tyler Lloyd. Hold on. No, that phone call that CP made to that private investigator was made was recorded before Katie even did that interview. That one interview she done on her own. That recording was taken before then. So we can't even say we got proof of life because we've heard her on the phone because that recording was taken before she did that interview. I believe. Or was it after? Oh, no, it might be after, maybe after. I don't know. I've lost myself now as to what shows they've been on, what YouTube channels they've been on, what he said in his YouTube channels. I just haven't got the patience for that guy. I don't want it. You know what I mean? No, I've seen it, but I've seen it promoted, but I haven't watched it yet, but I want to watch that. Yes, we've been saying it for a while now. Someone needs to request a wellness check. I can't do it. I'm in the UK. If I was in the US, I'd be on the phone to the police. I'd be on the phone to the police for a wellness check. I'd be on the phone to the police for... Is this information correct? Tell us now. I would be on the phone.
Right, I thought there was that the um What's the name? The caravan place. You look mate look me make me look bad. Do you see all these YouTube channels and I'm I'm well behind you all. Way behind you all. I have to sit there tomorrow. Today, I, was, I wasn't feeling too good today, to be honest, this morning. Like I said, I, I got up and I was really, really tired still. So I went back to bed and I woke up again and went back to sleep again. Finally got up about 12-ish. Stumbled around my house for my flat for a while. Had something to eat. Went out. Come back, and that's when I felt more okay. I'm awake. You know what I mean? I will. I will. I'll watch it tomorrow because I was playing. I was said I did say I was going to do a live this afternoon for uh, Magdalene Soto, and last night I was catching up on information on that case. I'm on meg leave for two weeks, so I have to no life outside of crying while I study through these cases. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm on meg leave for a few weeks, so I have no life outside. And we can discuss. But, uh, because this case has just taken my whole life over. Sebastian Rogers, you just took my whole life over. But, um, I don't know why it was this morning with me. I just was so, so tired, completely tired. And even my cats realised I, was, I wasn't wrong. Because I wasn't screaming at them to shut up. Because in the mornings they constantly cry. Constantly cry. And yet they've got food down. They've got water down. They've got a clean little bed. Do you know what I mean? But my one cat would constantly cry. But I think she, he knew I wasn't feeling well. Because he never cried once. Yeah, get better soon. It's heartbreaking, these cases are. It's just heartbreaking. And as I said last night, I didn't want to say, talk too much about what was being said last night, what had come out last night, because I wanted to get certified first, you know what I mean? My case. Can I even eat one? Oh, God. Oh, God. I I can eat. I just don't want to eat, if you know what I mean. I can't be... I haven't got the energy to go stand up and go in my kitchen and cook a meal. I've got meals in the freezer. I could just get out and pop in my air fryer. You know what I mean? So... Oh, God. Oh, I hope you get better soon, certified. Just make sure you get the rest you need. And try and eat something, even if it's like a soup, a fluidy food. Sometimes when I feel ill, well, like if I'm in a position where I just can't eat, because I know it's going to make me feel worse. I have to go and buy myself this. I like my chicken soup, but don't give me the tinned chicken soup. And don't give me homemade chicken soup. I have to have this, what we have in the UK, they're called cup of soups. Right? And it's a powder form. Just put the powder in the cup, pour in the hot water, give it a good old stir. And you've got a lovely soup, cup of soup. Oh, God. 
that's even worse. Oh no. Oh god. Oh I'm um I feel bad for you, babe. Certified, I really do. I've tried some of that baby food. You know when you feed your baby and you go you have to taste you go, mmm, nice. And then you turn around and you go, oh god, it's horrible. Because it's got no seasoning in, it's got no salting or pepper or any seasoning in at all, and it's horrible. So, well, just get rest and don't let these cases get to you too much certified. Oh God, Ellie, your husband needs it. Oh my God. You love the bun. You know what? I cannot eat bananas. I can't. Right? So my, my daughter said to me once, I haven't eaten bananas. I do not eat bananas. And when I was doing my job as a community care, care worker, and I, I was going from one job to another, my daughter said, Mom, just buy yourself a banana. That will give you the energy in the morning to keep going. Well, I've gone to work and I saw a shop. I thought, well, okay, I'll go in here. And they only sold, sold the bananas in a bunch. You couldn't buy them as one or two. So I brought this bunch of bananas. I thought, I don't like bananas, but I'll, I'm sure I can suffer if it's going to help me get through the day. You know what? I was gagging. I was gagging on the first two bites. Right? I couldn't eat it. I got to my client's house, and just before I left, I went, oh, do you like bananas? He went, yeah. And I got a whole bunch of bananas out of my bag. I said, have them. I can't eat them. So, but I can drink, like, these energy, like a milk drink or energy drink. But I can drink a banana flavoured drink. But I cannot eat bananas, but I can drink the energy drinks. So in the end, I started buying the energy drinks, the banana flavour ones. But give me a banana and I'll, I'll literally gag. I'm gagging. And my sister years ago, my youngest sister, years ago, I'm going back years and years before I even got married. We used to work at the same place. And this one lunchtime, she sat there eating a banana. And you know how you tease someone when you're eating something, right? And she sat there going, mm, like this to me, eating this banana. So you know what I did? My hand, my hand just come up and smack straight in her mouth. And this banana went right in her mouth. And she what you do that for? I said, don't tease me with bananas. Don't tease me with food you know I can't eat. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, not being on a... Oh, oh. Do you know, I was telling some my mum used to do for me because I could not, I would not eat bananas. Even as a child, I wouldn't. Couldn't eat them. So when our mum occasionally for a snack, she'd do everyone, banana, us kids. She had seven children. So she used to do a banana sandwiches for us. But knowing I wouldn't eat bananas, you know what she used to do? She used to get an apple, peel it, right, peel it, then slice it all up, take the core off it and everything, slice it all up, and put uh, apple on some bread and butter. Oh, my God, I love that. I haven't had that in ages. I might have to do that. Try sliced apple on some bread with butter. With butter. You've got to have butter. And it's after the surgery that's the real pain. Come on. The CO2 was pure pain for two weeks. Not for everyone, but it was for me. So...
But this is it, and they can't even look after one child. They can't even look after one child. Because he's so, CP is too controlling. And I keep saying this, you cannot be controlling with an autistic child. Because an autistic child sees life in a different, views life, sees life as totally different to the way you see it. Right? And they like routine. And if that routine doesn't fit with your, with his, what he likes, then it's going to explode. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I find it really hard to get my grandson. I had to bribe him the other weekend because I had to go to the chemist to pick up my prescription on the Saturday. Well, can't you get it uh, Monday? I said, no, I need my tablets for today. Right? But I don't want to go out. So, you know what I bribed him with? He had some pennies in a purse. Some pennies. I said, and he wanted 12 pennies. Just 12 pennies. He only had something like eight. And there's five P coins, one pound coins, two, two P coins, one P coins. Right? But he only had eight, even though he had like a pound coin in there. I said, well, perhaps if we go to this chemist, I might be able to get some more pennies for you. You know what? He was up. Okay, let's get dressed. So we got dressed and we're standing in the chemist and the people were laughing their heads off because he's going, now just remember when you get your money, you give it to me. It's mine, my money. You give me all your money. I'm going, really? And these people behind me are in bits. I'm going, I don't think you're going to get all my money. Whatever money you get, you have to get. To you said you would get me some pennies. <laughs> you ended up taking like four pounds off me that weekend. And change. I told him no more. Next time, if I let me like a <laughs> fish. Oh, God. He uses a term about who's important to him. Something like, if it feeds me. Oh. Do you remember when you said that? If they And you said something like, if you feed me something else, or sleep with me, then I'd... And, say, and I thought, I wouldn't even sleep with you. I'd rather sleep with a... A, in a bath full of dead fish. You know what I mean? Oh, he is. He's adorable. But he, he robs me blind. Hmm. But technology is different now, SG. You might just be able to get away with um, not having such a large cook nowadays. You know what I was thinking about today? It's so funny. I see it every day when I look in the mirror. But I was thinking about the scar I've got. I think I heard some talk, someone talking about scars. Right? Or something like that. I thought, well, I've got a scar. And someone's, I remember someone saying to me about, why don't you get a tattoo put there? And I thought, you know what? No. That scar is my tattoo. That tells everyone, even though no one's going to see that scar but me, right? But that's just part of my life. That's my life history, that scar. T 25 years to someone who could be CP twin, definitely worried. Yes, I am worried about Katie. I really am. I think we need to, she needs to come on a, a, a YouTube video or on a news channel thing, whatever. But we need to see her. Because even on the, when she's ranting 
and the back of that phone call that Chris made to the PI. She sounded drunk. She was angry and everything. But people are saying perhaps she's controlling him. Perhaps she's the one telling him, well, I'm not happy about what they put there. So you get on that YouTube channel or you phone this person up and you tell them this and you tell them that. And I'm thinking, possibly. But why aren't we hearing from Katie? Why is she not coming out in the public no more? And why is uh, CP gone very quiet as well? We haven't heard of him, what, for what, over a week or more? Not heard a thing. So because we're not hearing from CP, people are turning their attention to Seth. And I'm sorry, but Seth is the only one who's being out there looking, out of all three of them, looking for that child. Oh, we could so clearly see who talks. So, it's just... I'm not sure if she is the one controlling it and she's the one telling him to get on these shows and say this or say that. Or was she just so angry that day? Because believe it or not, that information that came out on that YouTube channel, on the web sleuth, right? When that PI said, I've been given, we've got information, but I, I won't share it, I won't divulge it because I don't think it's going to help the case, right? That information she was talking about was already out there, was already out on YouTube channels about her parents, her mum and her sister and everyone else. So it's, I can't understand why she went mad, why she was so mad. You know what I mean? Because it was already out there, Katie. People was already talking about it, Katie. So why did you flip your lead? And why did your other half come on cursing and threatening and issuing threats to PIs and to Seth when the information was already out there? You know, I've never been in a situation like that, so I can't answer any of these things about being in a, a relationship where someone's violent or jealous. So, but then again, if I ever met a guy like that and he started showing those traits to me, he'd be out the door. I wouldn't stand for it. This is why we need social media. We need one and other for just even the fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. But I really think we need to see proof of life. Chris, Christopher, if you ever get to hear this YouTube video, please, can we see Katie, please? Can we see it on a video? A live video, not recorded, a live I don't know. Go on one of your favourite channels that you like to go on. Right? Go on one of them just so that we can see Katie is okay. Not hiding behind any little profile picture. We want to see her sitting there and she's okay. We need proof of life. Because her ranting and raving in the background as you're talking and cursing and Issuing threats and whatever to people is not on. You are all lucky. If you, anyone is in a relationship like that, you're very lucky. I'm just glad you're all out of anything like that. I really am. Because I couldn't imagine anything worse than that. Nothing. I couldn't. It'd be soul destroying. But I don't like the fact that with Seth you now, how everyone's turning on Seth. I'm not happy with that because um, it, 
he's got, he's the one who was out there from day one searching, right? And, um, hang on. Right. He was the one out there searching from day one. He carried on the search even after the police scaled back. He kept it all going. Come on. Why won't this go down for me? So, right, and then people are going, because Tony wants to bring in that Nina Glass, and that other guy, which I don't think will be happening now, right? I think he's just bit the bullet there. But I don't think it's his fault. Tony should have checked the information before opening his mouth. So the blame lies at Tony's feet. No one else's. Don't know if we ever fully get away, but so thankful to be able to sleep safely. Yeah, I really can. I I wouldn't like to. I couldn't even say how how I could. Feel. Like you know how you you say. Oh, I, I know how you feel. I don't know how people feel in that situation because I've never been in that situation. So it annoys me when I hear like you know when. I first found out about my illness, right, and I had to have this biopsies and then I had to have the operation, and, oh, I've had biopsies. I don't care what you've had. You know what I mean? I don't care. It's not about you. He is a perfect, yes, I agree, he is a perfect target for the CG characters around him. And they are taking advantage of him now. For feck's sake, it, why did Tony have to say what he did the other night? There's no need for that. No need. Right? And that lad was on there as well, and he was backing it up. Right? And... There's no need for either of them to mention any of that until it had been verified. Because it's putting hope in Seth's mind. It's like, he thanked that mother of that child. He said, I just want to thank you. He said, because you and your son gave me some hope. You know what I mean? Gave me some little bit of hope that my son is still out there. So, I, I don't know, it's just so annoying when people, and you are going, you're going to get more of this stupidness coming out. Hi, Juicy Jules. Right? You're going to get more of these people coming out. More and more. It's like they want their five minutes of, 15 minutes of fame, and I'm sorry. You, you're coming up against YouTubers, not me personally, but you're coming up against some YouTubers. When you come on YouTube and you put this out or whatever, or you could put it out on your TikTok, there's people on TikTok that have been there years following the crime and all that lot, crime channels, and there's people on YouTube doing these crime channels for years. You're coming up against some big people, and they are going to check fact check everything that comes out of your mouth and they will rip you to bits if they find you lying and that's exactly what they did I don't know if any of you watch Bullhorn Betty oh my god I don't know where he's robbing she's around somewhere Right? I was watching Bull on Betty today and she was angry. I have restraining order on my head. Big jerk to my son. Cray cray with daughter. Says, speak, 
say speak on my soon. Oh god. Not good. Not mean. It's like people say you shouldn't bring uh use your children as um a bargaining chip with the fathers or the fathers shouldn't use them as a bargaining chip to the mothers. But in some cases you don't need your child around that bloke. Someone once said to me, right, I'd rather my daughter know a bad father than no father. Okay? She can know he's a bad father and he's a useless piece of crap. But doesn't mean you have to, she has to go and be with him, spend time with him. I never see the character when I see one. My cousin was a white collar criminal. So, I don't, I'm not saying my family is perfect, they're not. But I don't have nothing to do with my family no more. The only people I keep in touch now with my family from down in Birmingham is my sister and her two children, Pete, uh, my niece and nephew, and their families. Them are the only people I keep in touch with now. The rest of my family I don't have any contact with. Right, so... So when people say, oh, how many brothers and sisters have you got? I've likely got six brothers and six sisters. Six brothers and sisters. There's seven of us all together. But, but legit... But personally, I've only got one, I say, one, one sister. Because I don't acknowledge the others. They don't acknowledge me, I won't acknowledge them. I've got my, my family is my son and my daughter and my beautiful grandchildren. My son and her, his partner and my daughter and her partner and their beautiful children. That's it. That's all I care about. What does white collar criminal like a solicitor? Um, white collar. If someone who works in like an office or something, I think, who would have to wear a shirt and tie, sort of thing. I think that's what they mean by white collar. La. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's holding law enforcement up. They've got them records from the. The document that report, but obviously it isn't enough to arrest them. I was adopted. Thank goodness he wasn't a blood relative. Oh God! <laughs> oh my Lord! What you like to come up with? Come through with it. I thought I had problems with my family. Well, I don't have problems with my family. I just don't talk to them. <laughs> I just don't talk to them. I haven't got them on Facebook no more. When I came back from England after my mum's funeral, that was in 2019, I went straight on my Facebook and the only person I left on there for my family was my sister and her two children. Everyone else I took off Facebook. But not one of you tried to contact me in 10 years, but you expect me to contact you. And then when I found out about my illness, I told my sister. So she's going to tell my brother. And he said, oh, no, I don't get on with Angela, but I didn't want that. I wouldn't want that on, wish that on anyone. So I know by her telling him, he will have told the rest of the family. Not one of my family, outside of my sister, came to him to see if I was okay, if I needed anything. My sister even said she would come up and stay with me until I was fully recuperated. Now she lives down in England and she was prepared to come up and I said, no, I'll be fine. I've got my son, he's 10 minutes away. You know what I mean? I'll be fine. Right? 
But no one from the rest of my family got in touch with me. No one. And they could. They know I'm on Facebook. They know they can get in touch with me through Messenger. Funny thing, law enforcement don't get brought in if there's family intervention and counselling compliance with CPS regulations, exactly. Hmm. Oh, right, okay, is that what a white collar crime is? Okay. Well, I want to know what the DA is doing in a missing child case. I wouldn't have thought a DA would have been brought in, in on a missing child case. But there is. I've got a DA. But I think Seth needs to take a step back and look at her, what's going on around him because what's going on around him at the moment with Tony? Because he's letting Tony do all the interviewing, all the interviews. It's not going, it's not it's not good. You know what I mean? He doesn't want to give, he shouldn't give, um, like he says, Seth says, um, Tony only does what I ask him to do. Well, you've asked him to help with the interviews, like the um, YouTube channels and all that, like the news channels. But he's not helping Seth. It's like a runaway train again. We've got another train crash coming. I jumped off the first one. I'm not even getting on this train crash. Because we're just having another pile up. Because your PR is not doing his job, Seth. It's not fact checking. And as I said, people are coming through and they're saying these stupid things and they think, oh, we're going to believe them. No, we're not. I'm not going to believe you until we know for for that the, what you say is true. If that means phoning up law enforcement, right, that's what we'll do. I'm wanting to work on a map with missing children you ever found with dates, etc. Are there any compilations you are aware of? Um... I don't know. What was that one? Julia, the captain, K9 is going live at 9 30 pm. She's not with her dogs. I knew she was still searching. She just do not give out where she's searching or when she's searching. She was not going to give up on this. She said she wouldn't. Um. You want, I don't know, say if I don't know about them. Compilations, no, I don't know anything. I know one woman, I'll, I'll message her, she did a map thing of missing children. And apparently it's some, it's, it's I don't know what she calls it, but I'm, I'm going to message her and see if, I did message her. Saying, would she, could she? I was interested in her map work. Would she? Could she email me? She said, "Well, I don't email." Well, how do you expect people to get your information and your mapping off you? You know what I mean? So I don't know. She, she, this one woman is just a bit awkward trying to get information off people when they won't email. Wasn't it said that all searches were told to stop? Uh, yes and no. Seth stopped all searches because it was he did not want to put any of his search team in any danger because they've been followed. They were being followed left, right, and centre. Right, uh, Seth. Stood on his porch one night, having a cigarette, and he watched the car come up past his house, slow down, and drive past his house real slow, turn round and drive past him again. So, we know... Hold on. Yeah, nothing. We know... 
It's alright, my laptop's getting dark. I've just got to check something. So I was just making sure my laptop was plugged in. And it is. But um But as I said the woman I said could you email me those mapping that mapping system because then I could show it on here. He said I don't email I don't use emails. I'm thinking, well how are we supposed to get this information off you then? You come on a show on a Facebook page, sorry. And you say, oh, no one was interested in my mapping. And then when people ask about it, you don't email. So how are we supposed to get this information? So I don't know. But I'll keep a, I'll keep an eye out, an ear out for you, certified. I might even put some on a Facebook page if I don't get blocked by tomorrow. I, I can see myself getting blocked from two Facebook pages by tomorrow. Because <laughs> I've got questions for both Facebook pages. Right? One is, uh, I, one question I want to put up there is, I'm, I'm going to put, I thought this was a page where people could come on and put their opinions and their theories on. But all I'm seeing is people putting hate it's like hate being put out there you know what i mean that's all i read on this one facebook page hate about seth and the money he's getting and the fact that him and katie how old was katie when she had sebastian how old you know what i mean and now i don't mean that she had uh pregnancies before i'm going are you joking Yeah, that's what I would do. So if I I concentrate on one area first, right? Now you can go on to. There's a couple of sites you can use to get information for these people for missing children from Tennessee. You know what I mean? But I concentrate on one state first and try and map all them. You know what I mean? Up, whatever it is you're doing because we haven't even got a timeline for this case we haven't got a full timeline because we don't know what time he put the bing out we know we got him about 6 35 we don't know what time he put the bing out we just, we're only going on by what she's saying that he went to bed at nine o'clock that's what katie's saying and then at 6 a.m. in the morning, he wasn't there. So, we haven't got a timeline for when those at least. Like, I'd like to know what time they left the house on a Sunday, right? What time they picked up the niece and the aunt, met up with the niece and the aunts. What time they went to BJ's. What time they went bowling. What time was it when they went to this Texas Roadhouse? And all these questions and get a timeline right but we haven't even got that timeline we've got nothing all we know is that he went to he got proof of life of him leaving the texas roadhouse about 6 30. takes about 10 minutes or so to get home so he was home by about 6 40 6 35 6 40. between that time and 9 pm he put the bins out because at 9 p.m. he went to bed. Exactly, we've got no actual timeline. And people are more worried. It's like CP is more worried about his own, how he looks, how he looks online. I'm sorry, CP. I don't give a feck how you look online. I don't care. How bad you feel? 
I do care about your stepson, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. Right? We want a timeline. Law enforcement won't give, haven't given us a timeline. Law enforcement have given us feckle. Right. Where's Elijah Vu? Thank goodness they made a rest. Exactly, they haven't been found, but I'll say something about them. Law enforcement there have had everyone out searching. They've had all these organisations that, and they've not gave up after a week. They're still doing searches, law enforcement are. The family are still doing searches. You know what I mean? They are still looking for this little boy. Right? They're not being threatened and followed, intimidated, nothing. Because people want to find this little boy. But searching for Sebastian, you've got people being threatened, being followed, intimidated. Where is the CCTV from Texas Road? And other surveillance, TBI. Like some else, like, you know, the Royal Australian case. Yeah, right. I didn't really follow. Well, I watched it. I did follow it, but I didn't follow it on YouTube. Put it that way. I didn't do any lives on it. And they had him on camera, step by step, walking down that road. Literally, all the way down that road. They had him on camera, from one camera to another. They put that out. Okay, it's a different police uh, sheriff's office and whatever. Different sheriff or whatever. But at least they put out that video so people could say, Oh, God, yeah, I remember seeing that, that lad. You know what I mean? Now, if they just release that video, yeah, of Sebastian walking out the flipping Texas Roadhouse, and then, if they do, if they do that now, and then they have people phoning up saying, "Oh God, I remember seeing that lad. I remember that car. It pulled up here or it pulled up there. You know what I mean?" And they'd be going, "Why didn't you come out sooner?" Well, perhaps if you put the information out there sooner, people would jog their memories. If they cooperated more with providing a timeline, then we could consider if someone was either in the same home or was scoping Sebastian out. Yeah. We don't know if there's if they've got video from inside the Texas Roadhouse. I should imagine they have. They've got to have some video of it inside. The only highlight they own that's only the highlighted missing children. What about the rest of the missing children in the rest of the far country? Unfortunately, we can't just focus on Tennessee. These, there are children who vanish. There is way too many, way too many children go missing. I pulled up, oh, months ago now, I just typed in missing children in the UK. Right, and I'm not joking. A lot of them were from down London Way and places like that. But I'm thinking, and I'm literally scrolling page after page after page. I'm going, really? You don't? We don't hear nothing about these missing children. Don't hear a thing about these missing children. Right now, I opened up another channel, a YouTube channel, because I couldn't get into my original one. But then, literally about a half hour or so before I went live the other night, yeah, I could get into my original YouTube channel. But thank you, dickheads. After I've opened up another one. So I might use that one as one for missing children all over in the UK and just post regular videos of so many children on a video and post it, you know what I mean? 
and so and talk about these children that are missing and just set one night a week for that. You know what I mean? I don't have to do, I wouldn't put out as many videos as I do on here because this is a nightly case. But if I was to do one just about missing children in the US and the UK, I would do a nightly, um, a weekly one, uh, once a week. Maybe three hours, a two to three hour one once a week. So I might do that. Allegedly, our country is the country for human trafficking. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, uh, you know, people say there's no such thing as slavery. In the UK, there is. Oh, that goes on. Bringing in young girls. Promising their parents are going to get a better, a good education and this and that, and whatever. And they don't. They have them stuck in their house, scrubbing floors and eating bread and whatever else. You know what I mean? So, do you think that's a good idea then if I use my other channel for highlighting missing children everywhere? Because it's sitting there at the moment and I'm not using it now. I've got one video that I uploaded on it. But I could do that and just do it once a week. Put a video, like two to three hour video up once a week about missing children. Because I was just gobsmacked when I went on my one. In the UK, and I'm thinking, we don't hear about these children. We really don't. So, and like I said, in the US, you're a bigger country than us. So, you know what I mean? It needs to be highlighted more, and I think people need to know what's going on in their state, what children are missing in their state, where they live. Because a lot of people probably wouldn't know about half of these children that are missing. Because it's not put on the news. So I might do that actually. I'll sit down tomorrow. I'll have a sit down and think about it. I will definitely do it, but I'm just trying to figure out a day. I can set it for one day a week. And just put one video out a week. One video a week is better than nothing. Right, because I have to focus, this is my main channel, this YouTube channel, this is my main channel, and I have to, I've got other cases I'm looking at now. So, but if I did it once a week and just stuck to it once a week, and just got it highlighted, and got people just to share it, just to share the video, just so that people will see these children. I was watching some of on TV the other day, and I can't remember if it was 48 hours or, or an FBI thing, and apparently there was a video, and on it, uh, the guy, they caught the guy, right, but they found a video, and this video, loads of photos on there, loads of photos of young girls, very young girls, teenagers, women in the 20s, early 20s, things like that. And this woman was just going through those photos, was just watching those photos flick by, and she noticed her sister. Then she found her sister, and then because of that, they was able to um, ID this one body, because there's... This woman come forward and said, this woman's my sister. So then, for the police, that she was no longer Jane Doe. She was such and such. You know what I mean? So if people just saw it like that, I thought, okay. But when you're talking FBI site and whatever, if people don't go on these sites, they don't think about going on this FBI site and local, local law enforcement site. But 
I want to know as well. Some, uh, some of the to share, Sophie's. Have you put Sebastian on your Facebook page yet? Because he wasn't on there a month ago. I'd like to know if he's on there now. Well, you know what, Seth, I, I don't read newspapers no more here. When I did my one job as a care worker, well, I used to read papers then because I'd go to some of them with me, right? And they'd be talking about sport or this or that. So I used to read about the sports pages just so I could be updated if they asked me anything. Or oh, did you see this football? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I read about that. You know what I mean? We could have a chat about it. But I don't believe anything that put in newspapers. I don't even trust the news channels after time because they tell you what you want to know. A bit like law enforcement, you only get to know what they want you to know. So, but I don't, I don't even watch regular TV. My TV comes on in the morning, stays on YouTube all day. Well, what I'll do, I'll set a date and I'll, I'll do one video a week on that channel, okay? So I'll put the link out here. So if you want to sign up to that channel, please do so. I'll put it, where is it? <laughs> oh, God, I've got to find the link now to that channel. Uh, let's have a look, see if I can get it. Uh, am I going to get it? Yes. I just need... Oh, my mouse is doing the jig again. Again around the screen. I'm opening it up in the information I need. Yes, I've only got three subscribers at the moment, and that's probably my son, my daughter-in-law, and a friend above them. But I wasn't worried about that. I just wanted somewhere where I could upload my videos until I got sorted out with um, uh, is that the one? No, I'm done. Why have I gone to X? Why has it took me to X? Oh my lord. I'm thinking then, why has it took me to X? I didn't want X. So this channel, as I said, I opened up the other day because I couldn't get into my original account. And... I will use that, this channel to do uh, once a week on missing children all over the USA and the UK as well. Okay? You only look at the papers to get the puzzles. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I, because I don't trust what they say. I don't trust what they have to say. You know what I mean? I do not trust what they have to say. So, but sign up to that channel and once a week, I'll let you know on here when, what day it'll be. I can't say it'll be a weekend because... I don't, I don't always get on on the weekends if I've got my grandkids out. So it'd probably be midweek, something like that, like a Wednesday night or something, okay? Or even a Friday night when it starts to go a bit quiet on the Friday night. Because I can get on on a Friday night. My, my grandson allows me to come on.
But um, so please go and sign up there, and then we can check out all the missing children because they all need to be known. They all need to be put out there because there's so many, and it's heartbreaking. And some of them, I think, I look like on the US, like I post some, every so often I get um, a notification on my Facebook page from this missing children's pages and whatever. I'm going, no one is looking for these children. No one, because you don't hear no YouTubers talking about these children. You don't hear no TikTokers or Insta people on Instagram or Twitter talking about, about these children. So no one is looking by the police, maybe. And hopefully you've got some law enforcement that are really good. Yeah? So, and I feel bad. I'm thinking, why, why isn't this being notified? It's like, if it's because it's not an, an Amber Alert, right? It's like people don't want to know. And they should be, they shouldn't be put like that, they shouldn't, sorry. We don't have an Amber Alert system in the UK. We don't get told of any child going missing unless, unless it hits the headline news. And then we hear about it. But so many children go missing in the UK which have not hit the headline news. So... Where were you during your club bullish case? <laughs> I was in the UK. I was up in Scotland. I live up in Scotland, so I couldn't have got down there if I wanted to. And that was a big... Oh, I tried and blame TikTokers and all this lot, but to be honest with you, the police failed a lot because I was surprised how... the journalists could get so close up to where apparently Nicola Bully fell into the water. I thought, why isn't that all taped off? Why are they still letting people walk past that area with their dogs? Why have we got news reporters every morning walking up and down that area where she went in the water? Why? That should, that should not be going on. That should have all been taped off, right? And news reporters, who, as the guy in the boat who's out there searching, as he's getting out of his boat, he's got news reporters in his face. That should never have happened. What is that case? That case is where there's a, a mother, a young mother, a mother of two children, uh, every morning she'd take her children to school and then she'd go for, take the dog and then park the, her car up in the car park by the school and then walk around to this, this field area by a river. And she did that every morning. Right? And what she'd do as well, she, she was on a conference call. So she had her earpieces in. She wasn't talking, she was just listening to what was being said. And apparently, somewhere after that conference call finished, she went missing. And her dog was found running back and forth from the bench to this opening. And her phone was on the, on the bench and the dog harness was on the floor. So people knew who this dog was. They knew who the dog belonged to. But it took them over an hour, over an hour, to get in touch with the partner. Well, um, instead of calling it all off and stopping people from walking round there, they didn't. Like I said, they had people still coming into that film, walking the dogs. Yeah, that's it, Ellie. And it was a big, it was a, it was a stupid, 
Why? And uh, eventually found her. But I still don't know, understand how she got that far. Because, as I said, every day there's people walking up and down this long pathway from the bridge. There's a pathway they walk along to get to the field, right? Which took you along the side of the river, right? This body managed to get over a little weir, right? And then over all these pebbles where the water was very shallow, Managed to get past all that. Managed to get past the bridge, even though it was very shallow. Didn't get caught up on nothing. And go like a mile or so down the river. Even though it was bangs here and twists and bangs, she never got caught up on anything. And no one's seen her floating down this river. Sorry. Didn't, didn't pass my smell. Test that digging. Yes, they ruined the crime scene. And yes, they had a big cover up by the police because then they did this investigation into the police. <laughs> right? It's the police policing the police. If you know what I mean. And we all said it's just going to be a whitewash. It's, they're not going to find him fault for nothing. And they didn't, they didn't find any fault with what they'd done. What? It wasn't cordoned off. The crime scene where you lot, or the police were saying she fell in, was not cordoned off. You know what I mean? So, it was just ridiculous. And I, was, I still got my opinion, I still got questions on that case. Like I said, this river wasn't a fast flowing river. Right? And it was very shallow in parts. It had hang overhanging trees and branches and everything. Yet she managed to get past all that. And then it was only as she come back in with the tide a mile down the river, she was coming back up the river in with the tide, right, that she caught up on a branch, under these branches. But she managed to get past them in the first place. How did she get past all those branches in the first place? But coming back in with the tide, because it was a tidal, it goes in and out with the tide. She got caught up in I'm thinking, no, so much not right there. And it wasn't, uh, but it's just a big cover up. Shall we tell him about Peter Folding? Well, I feel sorry for him. Did you ever watch the programme on him? What, some... Uh, I don't know if it was a YouTuber or what, but he did an interview with him. And Peter Folding said the first day they went in, they found something in that river. You know where the old house was, that empty old house was? They found something up on some bushes under the water right by that house but when they couldn't go in because they had to report any findings back to the law enforcement so they did law enforcement said okay we'll send our own men in they wasn't letting Peter Folding send his men in comes back the next day expecting to go back there no it wasn't her But Peter Folding, I felt sorry for, because, law, to be honest with you, if the police are cordoned off that area, right, news reporters wouldn't have got to him. He'd have been able to get in the boat and do his job, get out of the boat, report back to law enforcement, get his stuff put away and go away without reporters being in his face. But there is one YouTuber on here that didn't like him. And then, a few, oh, a couple of months ago, a little boy went missing. He fell in, no, he didn't go missing. He fell into this pond. It wasn't a river. It's like a pond. 
And his father dived in the water to get him, but couldn't find him. So who did they call in? Peter, Fol uh, Peter Folding. Even though the police took him off their list of experts. They literally stripped him of everything. Because they know they didn't even have him come and testify in the... Um, or what was he? In the... Uh, where they talk about the body and everything. They didn't even have him come and testify or say anything there. Because they knew that he had proof that he found her body the first day he went in that water in his boat. And they couldn't have that being put out there. Because it took them over, what, two weeks before a body turned up? Actually, inquest. He wasn't even asked to go to the inquest. He got all the paperwork ready, all the videos, the films, everything. Everything he filmed on his cameras, on his boat cameras, everything. And they didn't even call him to the inquest because he had information that they didn't want getting out there. And they literally stripped him of being took off their list for contacts, for emergency help in future cases, everything. So... I felt bad because he was at, he was asked to go there by the family. He wasn't asked to go in by law enforcement, but he was working under law enforcement. So whatever law enforcement said he had to do, he abided by. And they just made a pig's ear of him. But a body was found, I can't remember, something like 19... 14 days or something later, a mile down the river, how she got there without being caught up on the sandbanks and all the other trees that was in the way, I don't know. But I'm just go on YouTube and punching out that name and you'll see channels come up about it. Uh, I'll tell you one that I won't tell you the one that I, that did something about her case because I, she's got no, she don't like Peter Folding. So she's going to give it from her aspect. Now, I've gave it from what I've seen, what I saw every day watching it on TV, every morning, how people was walking back and forth along that footway, the pathway to the field, around the field, sitting by the bench, sitting on the bench, where apparently she fell into the river. That should have all been combed off, called and off, and it wasn't. So it's just a big mess up. But they tried to make out she was an alcoholic, right? That she was going through the menopause and she was drinking and she was an alcoholic. I'm thinking, I don't think she'd be drinking knowing that she's got to take her children to school. Right? But they're putting that out there about her. And it wasn't true. You know what I mean? I don't even know what the inquest said. All I know is... Um, they come back, the police, police in the police, come back and gave them the all clear. And that detective in charge, oh, my Lord, where did they find her? Where did they find that detective in charge? The DC, whatever she, they call them. And... Um, She's going to the uh, press releases with this blue dress off the shoulder 
like it was on a on one shoulder but cutting across off the shoulder sort of dress. I'm thinking, no, 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 no. you don't wear that. It wasn't off the shoulder. It did have a strap on the other side, but it's like cut across a bit. And I thought, no, you don't wear that sort of thing to a press thing when you work for the police. Sorry. Blame the victim mentally to get people to look the other way, yeah. Yes, Ellie, I'm so glad you agreed with me on that. It was murder. But they say it was accident. And who are we to argue with the police? Who know exactly what they're doing? Not. Rebecca Smith, or who's Rebecca, Rebecca Smith? I was at the um, the DI in charge, Rebecca, Rebecca Smith. Where the hell did they find her from? They didn't. Listen to this. Nicola Bully went missing on a Friday, right? Thursday or Friday. They didn't get the detective in charge of the case put on until the Monday. So they had no one in charge of the case until Monday when they put this Rebecca or whatever her name is in there. But the way she was dressed at these press interviews, I thought, no, uh, you should have a nice blouse on or, and a skirt on. Or, you know what I mean? Not some dress she'd wear to go for a meal in. So you think these please? are being bad. Do you think the police in some of the county are being bad? You've not met some of our police in, our, on, in the UK. You really haven't. They are unbelievable. And then we had a case where it was in 2020, when we was in lockdown. Police officer, right, pulled the woman over she was walking along the street. I think she was coming back from her boyfriend's going home or something. And he pulled her over and said she was breaking the, the rules of the lockdown. Because I don't know what the rules were. All I knew was we were allowed to go out for 20 minutes a day, go to the shops once a day and go for a walk for 20 minutes a day. And that was it. Right? Well, he pulled her over and uh, he put her in his car unmarked car, drove off with her and killed her. Now, you can't make, uh, say, all the police are the same, but I'll tell you now, they were putting out warnings. If a police officer stops you and shows you his badge, get the phone. Phone the police and say you want something else out here so you can get something else there as well. Because trusting one police officer on their own was not good enough no more. Because you couldn't trust a police, a detective or whatever he was, pulling you over. If there was another, if he had a partner with him, then fair enough. But when it was one detective on their own, they're saying, no, if anyone pulls you over from now on, stops you for anything, for what? Whatever reason, ask them. You ask them to get another another police officer here as well. So that's what we have to do now. If anyone gets pulled over in the UK and it's only one detective or one police officer, right? And they say, "Oh, we need you to come with us. You need to get in the car." You could say, "No, I want another police officer here now." You know what I mean? Because can't, they can't be trusted. Because you may just get another one like that police officer. So, but so our police aren't spotless, I tell you, they, they have their problems. But honest, if you want to know more about that, just I didn't cover that case. I wasn't on YouTube then. Just type in Nicola Bully UK and it'll come up. All information. And believe me, what you read, if you pull up a news report on you, 
Don't believe a single word you read. That's all I'm going to say. Don't believe. If you pull up a news report or pony, don't believe a word you hear. Because so, so, so many mistakes were made in that case. So many. It's like people's going, well, why aren't you checking the field? Right next door is a caravan park. Why aren't you checking there? You know what I mean? Why aren't you, didn't you check the cameras straight away? They didn't check the cameras from the pub straight away. There was a pub, like you could come out of this park area and along another road and it leads you up by the pub. They didn't, they didn't check the cameras straight away. Again, like in this case, they didn't go to that shop and get the information. You know what I mean? They didn't go to that shop and get that inf their video of them that day. The reason I mention this case is that I believe TBI have treated this as a criminal investigation to forensics lost. Yeah, yeah. They have been treating it like a criminal investigation, but they just haven't got all the forensics. I don't think that they should have done the forensics the first day. Because, come on, if you, if you've done something bad in your home, right, yeah, and the police come in, you call the police in, and there's no sign, you've done a big clean up, you've done a clean up, right, so there's no sign visible to the eye, right, and then the police leave you, yeah, come back the next day, what do you think I would be doing? I would be scrubbing the skirting boards. I'd be having a tough brush out on all my tiles, on my floors, on my walls. Right? And after a while of constant cleaning in a room or wherever, evidence gets lost. So they should have done a forensic check. They should have said, look, uh, we know you put it down as a, you've called it in as a missing child. But this is being looked as also as on the criminal side, in case anything happened while you was asleep and someone's come in. We've got to check all this out first as well. And they should have had them move out of that house. Right? Go stay somewhere else for the night. Or until they cleared that house completely. Yes. It's trans they said the first day they treated him as a runaway. On the Monday they treated him as a run runaway. On the Tuesday they treated him as a missing person. On the Wednesday they did a full 180. Because that's when they realised they had no scent from the dog. There was no evidence of him leaving that house. Right? On his own. There's nothing. There's nothing to say. He got up, walked out that front door on his own. If he'd planned to leave, yeah, I know most children, I used to say to my son when he's a little boy, that's it, you're going to the naughty boy's home. <laughs> I knew where the naughty boy's home was, but I would never take him there. <laughs> and I go, right, let's go and pack a bag. We're going. And this one guy said, that's it, I can't take this no more, you're going. <laughs> and he's come in, he's gone in his bedroom, got his, a little rucksack, and he's put in some pyjamas, some underwear and socks and things like that. And I think he put some items of, some much of eat in there as well. I'm not sure what he's done. But he's, I know he put clothing in there. And I said, okay, mum, I'm going. And out the door he walks. I went, where are you going? Went to the naughty boy's home. I said, get the feck back in this house now. Right. <laughs> but he knew to pack a bag. And I think he was only, what, five or six then? And he, he didn't realise, he thought I was joking about the naughty boy's home. But it wasn't until we moved to another area and... His bus stop he used to get to go to school 
was just down the road from this home where they used to send naughty boys, like we class as naughty boys to. He said, I didn't realise it was real. He said, I thought you was only play, you know, joking with me. He said, then I realised there was a, a boy's home there. I said, yeah. I said, I knew where it was. I said, but I wasn't going to send you there. And KP evidently believable plus CP and his mum at house doing. Yeah, I think she got there pretty down, down quick, I think. You know what I mean? But it just, I can't understand why. Well, I do know why the world says come out and put. And that's to say it's a criminal case. Because if they do, then Seth can say, well, clear me. I want you to clear me. You're not holding this over my head for the next however many months. You are, I want you to clear me. And Seth would be cleared because he works for the prison services. He's on camera. 24-7 while he's there. And why? Because there's not one door, not one corridor you can walk down or go through without being caught on camera. Right? So they know where he was from 6.30 Sunday night. Right? Which is the same time that Sebastian got home with his mum from the restaurant. Right? So he knows where he was from 6.30 that night till 7.20 the following morning when he got in his car. They know that. But if they clear Seth, then the focus is going to be on CP and KP. Honestly, don't follow many missing child cases closely, but extremely rare FBI ever take. Yeah, but I was watching some, I watch a lot of the true FBI files, and they're talking about, I can't remember what it was now, but it was a, a missing person, right, missing person, child, missing child, FBI came in on it straight away, straight away the FBI are coming on this, I'm thinking, so what's the difference with that case to Sebastian's case? You know what I mean? What's the difference? Why did FBI come on that case so quick from the beginning, but not this case? It doesn't make sense. So I do know FBI do come on some cases from the beginning. Not all of them, but just some. So there's got to be a reason for FBI to come in on it from the beginning. Anyway, so now we have cleared the fact that what was said yesterday was all lies. I'm so glad we got that cleared up. I can now go to bed tonight resting very nicely. Because last night, I think that's probably another reason. I didn't sleep very well last night. And that's probably why I was so flipping tired this morning. Right? I just had no energy whatsoever. Of course, I didn't even have energy to go and get my second cup of coffee. I went back to sleep before my first one went cold. I got up and made myself a coffee. Took it back to my bedroom, turned, put my TV on, thinking I'll just sit in bed and write my cup of coffee and watch some YouTube in bed. No, nope. fell asleep before I even drank my coffee. That's how tired I was this morning. I do know for a fact. Oh. Well, I do know for a fact FBI is extremely busy with many of. Yes, yeah. If it went over state lines, if, say, that lad had been Sebastian, right? Yeah? Say, 
I found out it was Sebastian and I was trying to find him. They moved on. They moved him somewhere. Then I think FBI were going to come in because it had gone over state lines. Right? And I think FBI did go in on that because it had gone over state lines. But then once it had been cleared that it wasn't Sebastian, FBI backed off again. But I, I, we just got to have hope that the police, law enforcement, are doing their job. And the only thing I can do, and I only think a lot of YouTubers can do, is stop putting out the BS, stop doing the clickbait titles, right? And keep the focus on Sebastian. You know what I mean? Stop it. Stop it now. I've ball on Betty today. She was so mad today when I watched her one video. I thought, oh my god, ball. I'm so glad I'm not in the same room as you. Because you oh my but she was saying exactly how I was feeling. And she's talking about a YouTube channel and their moderate and the moderators and everything. And how disgusted she was about it. Because as she saying, these YouTube channels are saying they're there for Team Sebastian. But then you've got moderators who are only liking people who put something up there nasty, something nasty up there on their chat about Seth. If you put something nasty up on their chat about Seth, you get a like. If you put something really nice about Seth, no, they didn't care. Maybe with Seth's CPS documentation, TBI will have some kind of... Well, this is it. TBI didn't even have that paperwork because some of the county didn't give it to them. Why didn't the uh, Sheriff's Office give them that information? So this is what I'm saying. TBI need to be on top of this case. They need to be saying, right, what have you got for me today? And don't give me any BS. I want the information. You know what I mean? I contacted Missing Centre for Exploited Children. Oh, no, FBI wasn't in charge. Some county was in charge. Yeah, some county are in charge. So I don't think he... And TBI, I could hand it over to FBI. I think it needs to be some account. Uh, the sheriff's office has to hand it over to FBI if need be. But TBI need to be on top of this case and say, Look, you withheld information from us now. What else haven't you told us about? Have we seen all the videos? Have you given us all the videos oh God, that you've got? Have you got all the all these footage you've got of home security videos and dash cams and all that, have you given us all that information? Because if not, we want it now. They need to be on top of this, TBI. But they're not like just sitting back and letting Summer County Sheriff's Office sit there having their coffee and donuts. But we've got to believe that they, we've got to hope and believe that they are doing the job. And Tony, you get any more information, verify it before you open your big gob. For Christ's sake, even I knew. I'm not law enforcement. I'm not a big criminalist. I'm not, I'm not, I'm nobody. But even I knew that that information was, could not be correct. Because I would not give it to any Joe blogs off the street. They're not going to do that. Anyway, it's gone. Oh, God. Nearly two and a half hours. Yeah, I've got to go and count my tablet. Evening of Carl. Yeah. So, it's, it's just unbelievable what is coming out all the time. Every... But it's...
these two Facebook pages, and I'll probably get kicked off them because I've got a question for each Facebook page, and I'm going to get blocked or kicked off them. I know it. So sometime tomorrow, tomorrow night, you probably have me saying, you know I got kicked off this site. You know I've been blocked from here. Wouldn't surprise me if I do get blocked or kicked off. Because the one site just makes me sick when I see some of the comments people are put and a post that people are putting up there. It's not even about Sebastian. They're not even about Sebastian. They are just pulling things out of the fecking air and going, oh yes, we like that idea, let's go with that. And then they put it as a post. And you got people go, oh, I'm so glad you said that. I totally agree. Seth is such this and Seth that and Seth this. Really? You want a Seth to a hate page for Seth? Go and open a page up for hate against Seth. Please do that. Right? <coughs> because that page was set up for Sebastian. And at first, they was putting on some... Some people was coming through some good information. And I was getting that information off there. Now all I'm seeing is hate and BS. And I can't, I, it was just my heading. And that everyone that turn is set up. You, you dare say anything about that interview, that information being put out, being a lie, you'll get blocked. you get blocked. No, that, that isn't fair, because people are only saying, look, you need to fact check. Do you checking of your information? This isn't fair on Seth, when you're taking information from someone and then telling Seth this. He's getting his hopes up just to be told, no, it's not true. What? If I was Seth, you'd be out the fucking door now, Tony. Because you're not doing your job. And Seth, if you listen, please don't have me a glass come on. I know we should give everyone a second chance. But she's she's in with Tony, and you know Tony's gob when he gets going. Right? He don't know when to shut it. And then he has a... Uh, Verbal diarrhea. So, anyway, I've got a ghost, everyone. I'm going to say thank you all for being here. Right? Didn't really talk about much, apart from slugging people off. So, I will be back tomorrow night. Hope to see you all there then. As I said, the link is there. I'll put it in the description as well for my other, for that other YouTube channel. And I'll sort out a day when I'll do once a week where I'll put out cases of missing children from all over the UK and all over the USA, okay? Because they need to be kept informed. These children haven't got a voice. So I'm going to go now. So I can go and take my medication and then go to bed. And I'll see you all tomorrow. And thank you for being here. I really, really do appreciate you all for being here. So thank you. And good night. Mm -hmm.